Hello everyone, Dylan here with another LEGO Star Wars review, and this one's on the now being released is uh, Mandalorian's N1 Starfighter, or, of course, from the Book of Boba Fett, of course. <coughs> oh, so on the front of the box here, and that also, and you're probably wondering, like, how'd you get this quite early? Well, Kohl's, uh, of which has it, but just check out, just try your Kohl's stores. And if they don't, then well, I'm sure other stores will probably have it anyways, but yeah. So on the front of the box here have the Lego Star Wars logos and that odd cutoff or in the corner kind of border thing that we've been seeing since the beginning of the year. And of course, with the green strip and also Boba Fett and Fennec Shand depicting the Book of Boba Fett, of course, just like we had with Boba Fett's palace. We'll have that, and age recommendations 9 and up, set number 75325, has 412 pieces, and also the green sign there, and all the minifigs included. And now on to the back of the box. You can see it in a resting position, and all the minifigs around, and the two features of it, that end lego.com slash star wars, and yeah. Now onto the instruction manual, which is so much different than the front of the box, which as you can see, so, and of course does have that interesting and not sure if you can tell on camera, but a large array of different bricks being scattered, exploded around, that were raining down or whatever, which is kind of interesting how that is, but or like said, still picture of it. So my good guess about the why I like this is probably just to save a bit of time and effort of letting the cover be the same as the box cover, which, as you probably saw with most, some sets kind of did that, where the cover was different, but yeah. So you like flip one page over, and it's advertising about how uh, eventually the bags and sets are going to be paper instead of just flimsy plastic. And of course, Got a little typo there. Alright, and definitely pause and read, or just go like this. Pause and read if you like. And also, whereas my you know, my copy of which had just plastic bags, had just the plastic bags to it, but not sure if it. But although, if you like, get this now. Well, mine had the plastic bags, but although I'm probably sure that maybe yours could come with uh, paper bags if you bought this now, but. Well, that's maybe that's just by chance, but yeah. Add for building instructions app. All that same stuff. And on the back, how to win on the online survey. And the pieces that come with the set, of course. And then add for Boba Fett's palace and last year's Slave One, of course, also fitting for the book of Boba Fett. And the last building step of it. So, on to the main things of this set. And of course, from left to right, first have is the Mandalorian himself, of which all the uh, printings of which, same as it's been since last year, of course, but, and of course, wielding the Darksaber that still doesn't have the distinctive shape it's supposed to have. And of course, just same as it was last year in the Imperial Light Cruiser, of course. And also, kind of like last year, have the jetpack right there, of course. But it's in a darkish pearl gray instead of a lightish pearl gray, of course. But interesting thing. But what's kind of different about this version of Mando is that if you take off the helmet piece, actual face print to which. But except you don't get a, a black hair piece to put onto it. But you can add that if on and if, if you want. But and of course, after like two three years of people saying need a face print to which, and they finally got that. And then 
Next, it would have Grogu, which pretty much just about the same as he's been for the last two years or so. Yeah, two years. And first time of us getting Pelimoto. And aside from that, and of course, her like her front torso printing done really good, and also the face print of which done good, and also nice use of the new utility belt piece from the Lego Batman movie sets. And of course, holding the wrench piece, of course. And as for the hair piece of which, I think it could have been a little bit bit different and better, which because if you look at her hair in the show or in the shows. Uh, is which kind of more curly, fluffy, and all. Well, but not sure if that's me, but I'm not sure, but yeah. But also, very lack of leg printings, but also, if you like, see her in film or in show outfit, of which there's probably like a pocket or two around there, but yeah. The last of which we which have the BD droid. Who's all new to this set? Then, of course, in a couple of months, we'll also be getting it with the uh, brick built uh, BD1 uh, uh, UCS set that there will be but next to the UCS plaque of it, of course. And whereas for the uh, sculpting of which is pretty much just great for that. I know, like the antennas, but although not at all any posability of it, but at least that's all right. Because it would have been too much of a hassle if it was two separate pieces. but And of course, got to work just like the D.O. figures from like 2019 and 20, of course. And also like D.O., a single stud on the back of it so you can attach different things to him. But yeah. Anyways, quite nicely done for that. And a flip to the back of it. If I go to that, and you can see a Pelimoto. Uh, back torso printing and face printing, which also done good, of course. And also, a little thing to say about this minifig selection, at least we do get like two that were around in sets before, but, and of course, two of which that are new and exclusive. Well, well, BD Droid probably not going to be exclusive for very long, but yeah. But although I think what this set also could have included is if you look at or seen episodes of both The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett, which then you would notice that there was often, of course, pit droids around in Pelimoto's repair shop, of course. But I think they should have included that, even though there was a... Well, they did redo that in the recent advent calendars, but of course, should have also... Why not also use that in this set as well? But I'm not sure. Just something to kind of say, but yeah. And that's about it with the knee pick selection. <clears throat> and now on to the N1 Starfighter itself. Well, of course, from first glance, it is pretty much like the recent Nabu Starfighters, of course. But just all gray instead of being like half gray and half yellow, of course. And of course with some different bits added to it, but yeah. So like, as for this front part of which has probably this like speed champion or something canopy piece, but in like solid opaque gray color, of which nice use of that. And, and of course have some like Technic bits of which use, and of course with the like the globe pieces, or as some of us like to call the uh, Baraki eyes from Bionicle, of course. And of course, has some of those cylinder pieces around, put to some good use there. And that's where some of these engine bits with, or these engine bits, a lot of really nice grief linking, especially used with the like megaphone, classic megaphone piece and telescope pieces, used as like wiring or something. And also some more of those like globe pieces there, and of course have lightsaber hilts, also used as grief linking. Well effective to that. And also one of those zip line pieces also used as Greeble and one of the recent uh or pieces is also for that great use of those pieces. And for the back part of which same kind of wheel effect as 
previous Naboo fighters, of course. And of course, with cone pieces leading to uh, one of those pointer pieces that were used on recent Hogwarts sets in the Harry Potter sets, of course. And as for on the top part of which, is, and this is where one of the features comes in. Whereas one of those recent uh, larger plate pieces with a sticker on it, and also with a binocular piece, probably as an engine bit. And of course, underneath it is where a spring launcher is hidden. And basically, you like tap on it, and it shoots it out. I wish nice use of that. And of course, probably tell it. And of course, like that, so you can know where to tap that to get it to fire. Oops. And for the farther side part of which, as you can see, <coughs> does have some of those. Some have used good use of some of those are rigid pieces with one uh, vent piece there. That was nice for that. And for this upper section part of it with the vent pieces again, but in a metallic silver, of course, in silver, yeah. And you can like lift that up, and then you have a little bit of a little storage area, but uh, which with some lime green kind of bleeding in, which it was gray, and also one pink one as well. Probably to indicate where to go put the piece at during the build process, and also some blue as well. I was kind of bleeding through it, but I think it should, they should have been either, should have been light, should have been dark gray, or at least black. But yeah, but anyways, you can use that to take the uh, dark saber apart and also rest, rest it on those two studs and fits well, fits great in there. And that's for this upper part, which where you got not just one, but two cockpit uh, areas, or just two separate cockpits. So unlike with the snow speeders, where it's like one whole cockpit with two figures in it, facing different ways, but this is actually two separate ones. Whereas the first one of which, oops. Oh well. Which, as you see, has a nice good seat area with a round tile with a sticker for a control panel on it, and also one of those recent pieces used from the from friends and whatnot. And also a like gold bar piece in brown to be the headrest area. And of course, enough, and well, it's enough space to fit your Rando minifig into. Although, maybe unless if you didn't let him have the jetpack. But, oh, also you can fit the jetpack in with the storage area, of course. But it's still nice and snug. And of course, you can fit him in there as well, of course. And this upper part, which opens right up and can fit, place Grogu on there on a single stud and close it open. Unless if you had the cockpit area moved a bit, but yeah. And, and this, which pretty much reminds us all of the like uh, Republic uh, Y Wing from Clone Wars of 2009, but yeah. Nice to see a feature like that return. And for underneath the witch, you pretty much have a few Technic bits and a couple wheel pieces going out to this blue stud representing the third other uh, engine that goes from the bottom part of it. And as for the back area, which does have one long jagged slope and also one of those other new type of jagged slopes That's for that. And couple of long rod pieces and going out to one of the classic uh, spike pieces that have a rubber tip to it which in this case great to see this piece make a return which haven't seen in quite a while but great to see here but yeah whereas for the bottom part of which there's a whole lot of exposed studs which but of course you can like enough to like make a stand of bricks or whatever Okay. Oh, 
and also to the mouth onto a little comparison with our latest, with our last Nabu fighter right here from 2015, which as you can see, there, which is kind of, there's a few differences like of course it has the large uh, slope peak or curved slope pieces whereas this one's just a like single domish piece and a few things modded around so I see I guess they're kind of the same but just like modded slightly as this new one of course but yeah <coughs> and of course like area that the droid would be or r2d2 droid would be placed in replaced with the cockpit of grogu of course and of course previous ones and of course this and other versions did have the like common wheel pieces which this one also does have but also has a lot of bunch of greebling details of which which the past versions never did also didn't have and back tail parts of which done so different and of course good way to change things up a bit but and also to note is with this version of the Nibu fighter is came with a whole bunch of odd accessories for that but you don't get that with this version so and of course this back in 2015 was about $50 with all of that and this which is out now and doesn't have any of that but is like $20 more so kind of weak of that but yeah So for my overall verdict, okay, overall verdict, that overall I think this is which a great set of which, so now it might be like 30 to, or 23 dollars overpriced, but maybe that's because of like uh, Star Wars licensing or whatever, but yeah, but also still would have been nice if the pit droid minifig also could have been included, and, or maybe a little uh, tool rack for Pelimoto, since of course has around that shop of which but for the mean fake selection great that uh we got another version of man of the mandalorian of course like with an actual face print obviously and then of course great that we finally have peli moto and the also bd droid even though he may not be exclusive for very long obviously but yeah but of course all the designs of which well benefit and differ, differ from the previous Nabu fighters of course and also do get plenty of good uses of pieces and whatnot and yeah although I think also would be nice if there would have been like a couple more sprinkle launchers around and for some extra abilities and yeah and so now if you're looking to get this set for your uh, Mandalorian collection and Book of Boba Fett collection. Oh, and also, I, but of course, maybe it'll have some additional things going on in season three of The Mandalorian, but whatever. But we'll, we'll see what happens, but yeah. And now, if you're looking to get this set for your Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett Lego Star Wars collection, definitely pick this up. And if you're looking to get an all new version of the Naboo Starfighter that is a little not so repetitive from past ones well also definitely pick this up and that's about it with this video and thanks and thanks for watching and please subscribe